In Module 3, we're looking at forecasting labor supply and demand. In other words, we are attempting to anticipate the needs of our workforce. When we look on the supply side, we can choose to find employees internally or externally. There are some internal advantages. We know the employee and how they fit in the, in the culture. We have lower recruiting costs. There are lower training costs. And internal recruiting also serves as a motivating mechanism. Employees are more likely to strive to be promoted from within and less likely to seek opportunities elsewhere. Common internal recruitment tools include job bidding, skill inventory, and job posting. We'll expand upon skill inventory in a few minutes. The problem for an organization, though, lies when your internal applicants aren't qualified. Then you may have to look outside the organization. When you look outside the organization, this con is considered external recruitment. The job is open to anybody and everybody to apply. Often, these lists are clearly distinguished with two separately, separately distinctive job posting lists, one for internal job opportunities and one for external. If you spend some time at various human resource sites, specifically those in government, you will actually see two distinct lists. While external recruiting may bring in new ideas, it can significantly hurt motivation and it ultimately will cost your organization a lot more in training costs. Can you think of a blend between both external and internal recruiting? Internships. While many students try to obtain internships that will provide real world experience, internships are also extremely useful from the organization's perspective. I've been an intern for several industries, and although at times it felt like slave labor, it also opened up many doors. Interns are, in effect, a temporary employee, and they can meet the needs of an organization in the short term while also playing the role of an important recruitment tool. Now, there are some tools you can use in our forecast of supply and demand. The needs of an organization are ever fluid and it's difficult to maintain a successful balance between the right number of employee labor hours with the sales. One of the tools corporations use to manage the supply side of their labor force is the skill inventory. The skill inventory is a profile for each of the employees in the organization. The profile will show the training of each employee, their education, perhaps their previous work experience, uh, previous positions that they've held within the company, aspirations for jobs that they're interested in. All this helps us target potential candidates for internal promotion. As an HR manager, I could do a quick search for a certain skill and see if anyone meets that criteria and then encourage them to apply. An example is my friend Jenny. She works for a large defense firm outside of Washington, D.C. While she was overqualified and overeducated for the position she initially started with in the company, she was eager for employment and happy to be in a good corporation. After a year of employment in her unchallenging and underpaid position, she contacted her HR rep and expressed her interest in finding a more challenging job in the, within the organization. A few months later, she was encouraged to meet with a different department as a prospective candidate for a job that both met her needs to be challenged along with a nice pay raise. Just recently, she was once again promoted to another department. And while she is possibly working more hours than she hoped, she is steadily climbing the corporate ladder into a place of stability and solid income. I should note that large corporations such as these don't exactly reside in Carteret County, but even if your goal is to stay in the area and work for a smaller company, I really can't emphasize enough how essential it is to express your goals to your boss. It's difficult to find quality employees in this area, and if you make it to clear to them that you have a desire to work hard and move up within the business, your employer is more likely to consider you for those future positions. One of the tools that HR departments use is replacement charts. These, along with other succession planning tools, will identify essential positions within the organization that might become vacant soon. Then they identify candidates who would be qualified to replace these people. The next step, then, is to analyze the skills that these potential candidates are lacking in the, in the new position so then they can be trained. Ultimately, when that person retires or moves on or radically disappears, the transition is smooth with a promoted employee. So now that we understand the supply side of labor, let's look at the demand side. 
This is done by analyzing past trends, sales, and additional variables like seasonality, economic conditions, consumer spending, GDP, all that fun stuff. How can we determine what the, deter what the demand is like? That's what we're looking for. What do we expect? If we're hitting a great recession, how much is this going to hurt our business? Is tourism down? Are gas prices up? How much is that going to hurt the Crystal Coast and therefore my business? So the next thing we look at is whether the supply and demand is matched. If our supply and demand is matched, then we're very happy, right? We're spending the right amount in labor and we're bringing the right amount coming in to meet our budget needs. But most likely we're, re we're meeting condition two or three. Condition two is when we have too much labor and not enough supply. So that means our, we're, we have a lot of payroll expenses and not a lot of sales coming in. And usually that leads to layoffs, early retirement. Sometimes you can encourage your older employees to retire and then place a hiring freeze so that you don't hire new people to replace them. Um, or just a hiring freeze in general. Um, in some corporations, there's so much turnover with people finding new jobs and leaving the area that you can reduce your size of your labor force just by putting a hiring freeze on any new employees coming in. Ideally, we'd be in condition three where we don't have enough labor and then we get to hire. We use our job analysis and then design, job analysis and design as in our recruitment process. The tricky part for any business is determining just when the mismatch between supply and demand warrants action. Is our demand so low that we have to lay off employees and reduce hours? Many corporations wait as long as possible because the employee morale will take a huge hit in light of layoffs. But when payroll expenses stay, stay too high for too long, a business can quickly run into problems. And as with most big questions in life, the decision requires some strategic analysis. So I hope that kind of highlighted some of the key points in Chapter 3. Uh, make sure you complete all the rest of the aspects to your module, and I look forward to reading your discussion board posts. As always, everything is due Wednesday by 11.45 p.m., and email me or call me with any questions. Thank you.